Hi, I'm going to introduce a bit of software that I wrote called Review. It's a command line app that helps you organize practical reviews of programming tasks that you want to learn. So let me explain what I mean by that. When I was learning JavaScript, I ended up writing just amazing amounts of tester code, stuff that I typed in from the book, just stuff that I was trying out. And the notion was that by trying out lots of different things, I would magically absorb stuff. A lot of times I didn't absorb it very well. So I started using this software called SuperMemo, and it enabled you to do things like this, um, grade yourself on how well you remembered flashcards, you know, and uh, it actually helped a lot, and I don't want to criticize it, but there is one thing that SuperMemo doesn't do. It doesn't help you practice. Programming is a practical art, and it absolutely requires practice. So after not reviewing for many months my super memo questions and getting way behind i decided what i needed to do was to create a new system that would help me every so often come back to things that i might need to learn so i used the spaced repetition method of super memo to build review so what I'm going to do is take you through a, a question or two of review, show you how I use it, and then explain how to install it and uh, get to work. So this is what review looks like when I start it up. So let's take it from the beginning. And to run the program, I would just type in rubyreview.rb. And what I've got here, after I've used the program for a few weeks, as I have, um, is a list. And I can use the right bracket like that, or for that matter, just a period, to scroll through my various tasks. So far, I have five sets of 10. And notice it gives me a due date here. And the first line, it also tells me what language the question is about. So um, to look at the first on the list, you just press X, or I could type in 43. I'm going to just type in X here, and it opens up the question. This question is a JavaScript question. I have reviewed it a couple of times. The last time I reviewed it, it had a score of three, which is uh, a little shaky. It has something called starter text, which I'll show you in a second. And the last time I viewed it was on the 9th, 10 days ago, and it's due today. So I'm going to go ahead and answer the question. It says, an answer exists. Do I want to archive it before opening? And I'm going to say yes. So I just hit the enter key. And this right here is that starter code that I referred to before, where it says starter here. So what am I supposed to do? All right, I am supposed to write and then print the result of using chained arrow functions that return the square of only elements that are a positive and b integers. The response should be this. Okay, so I'm not going to actually do this on screen for you. I'll just do it instantly. I don't know if I've got it right. In fact, I'm pretty sure I don't, but let's try it out. Within review, it is possible to press R to run your code, and the results will appear right here. Let's see. Oh, of course it's wrong. What did I do wrong? Let's see. Oh, of course, I was using a Ruby function instead of a JavaScript function. I needed to use filter, I believe. So let me make that change. OK, maybe this is right. Still probably isn't, but I'll try it. Oh, of course it's wrong. All right. Oh, of course, is integer is wrong. I, I don't I forget the syntax. Let me look it up. 
Oh, of course. I remember now. Uh, it's number dot is integer. All right. So maybe that'll work now. I'm going to hit R again. And I got the right answer. Great. Now, this is looking kind of messy, and I might want to look at the question again. So what I'll do is I'll hit F for refresh. The next step is to hit save for save review. I'm prompted to give a 5 through a 1, with 5 meaning mastered. And um, uh, I wouldn't say I'm quite confident with this yet. I'm going to call it shaky. I'll give it a 3. And it's prompting me to try again in a week. And that sounds about right, actually. So I'm going to accept it. Notice this says spaced repetition date. What that means is the kind of simplistic algorithm to uh, calculate the next date of your review. And uh, if you're curious, you can always just go H and uh, whoops, H for help. And then um, one of these items here is about it. But we'll not worry about that right now. OK, so uh, and as I said, it's a three in a, I'm going to accept a week. So I'm just going to press Enter. And there we go. The next review date will be one week from now. And if I hit Q, I'll return to the list. So if I go forward a couple of screens, here it is. So that's kind of cool. I'm not going to do any more for you right now, but I think you get the idea. When I open up an answer like this one, um, it actually saves the location within a file structure. I'll show you the, the, uh, the old answer. and. And here it is. The bookkeeping for the location of the files and so forth is all nicely organized. So I don't have to worry about all of this old stuff. And the code that I type in is saved. Like this is lost forever to me because it's so hard to manage. But all of these, all of these things well, they're on a list, and um, I, I will be reviewing them regularly. So I use Sublime Text. You don't have to. You can set your own text editor. And uh, I have a, a bunch installed on my system, and it automatically recognizes which ones I have installed. And I can choose a different one, like if I want to use Atom. OK, let's do that. And let's uh, look at that same code here and uh, answer. Now it's opening up Atom. So here it is in Atom. All right. I can also change my default language for new questions right here with set programming language, P. Right now, I've got Ruby. But if I wanted to do a whole bunch of JavaScript questions, then I could just choose two, and JavaScript is saved as the default language. There's all kinds of other tasty things for you to look at. And what I would recommend that you do is just read through the help items. And uh, the system is actually pretty simple. So what I'm going to do is make a new folder and clone the repo into it to show you how I would get started using review. So you're going to type in git clone and then whichever option you want to use from GitHub. And then I'm going to put it in the review two folder. So here we go. And then we'll go ahead and go into review two. Next, type bundle install. Now, this is assuming that you have Ruby installed. And I'm not going to explain how to install Ruby. You'll have to figure that out yourself if you don't have it. But once you've got it installed, you might have to run gem install bundler like this. And that, in turn, will allow you to run bundle install 
And there we have it. From there, you can type Ruby review, or actually it'll just be a Ruby review here. When you clone my repo, you are given all of my data, <laughs> even like when I'm gonna be reviewing things, which probably isn't that useful to you. But I'll, I'll tell you, at least you can look through it and get an idea of how it works. And then what I would recommend that you do is go ahead and delete a few things. Uh, I'm going to make a function that will do this automatically. But you'll want to go into the data folder. There's a couple of things to delete in here. You'll want to delete review.json and then go into starters and just delete everything there, everything. Be careful about that command. And there is one other thing to delete and that is answers. All right, so we're gonna run that same dangerous command. And that looks right, okay. Now we can go ahead and run Ruby review. To start your first task, just type N. And in these instructions will take you through how to do it. We're gonna use Ruby. And then in uh, Nano here, it's gonna prompt you to add the instructions for the task. And I always begin with the title as the first line to make the task list look nice. So write hello world. So write hello world in Ruby. Okay, the starter code. Well, if you wanted to, you could add some starter code that would help your user get started with a more complex kind of task. I don't need that for this. Input tags, well, sure, hello world is a good tag. I'll go ahead and save that. And the initial score, well, maybe I'm a total beginner and it's blank. And then if we want to actually get to work, we simply type A and uh, here we are. And uh, this is the answer file, and I can type uh, puts hello world. And then let's try running it. And there it is. Wonderful. Um, I can save a review. I think I've mastered this now. Uh, and I can change the score or change the date. I can do that. Oh, well, let's make it in one year. And so now it says oh, 12 months from now. I think I have gone through everything that I need to in order for you to get started on your own. And I hope that you find this program useful. I do really encourage you to go through the help topics. So one last thing, if you are a Ruby programmer, I would be delighted to have your help adding new features. It's uh, gotten to be quite big. And I've actually, in a rather artificial way, divided the code into models, controllers, and views. Obviously, this isn't a web app, so the views aren't web views, but um, I, I think you'll, if you dive into the code, I think you'll probably see why I did that. I would also appreciate any feedback. I have one other note. If you do clone review and then you go to uh, pull down the latest changes, then, well, there might be some issues in overriding your data. Um, so I'm going to solve that problem. I'm going to uh, work on that uh, and try to get it fixed within the next week. So hopefully if you're looking at this later on, um, it will already be solved.
but if you do pull a new version, then just be aware you'll want to take your data, put it somewhere else, and then um, and then move it back. I think that would probably be the best way to do it. Okay.